Okay, uh, let's discuss this second practice exam. Uh, first one. We have a rational function, r of x is equal to 6x squared minus 7x minus 3 it's over 2x squared minus 7x plus 6. Okay, we're going to analyze this uh, uh, rational function. So to analyze the rational function, we have to know if it is in the lowest term, which means we have to factor it. So we factor the numerator. You see uh, 6, negative 7, negative 3. So you will get a 3, 2. 3 times 2 is 6. Negative 3, you write 1 and negative 3. So 1 times negative 3 is equal to negative 3. You do the cross product, you see here's 2, here's negative 9. The sum is negative 7, okay? So you put x here, x here. So the numerator is a 3x plus 1 times 2x minus 3. 2x minus. This is a factorization of numerator. Denominator, we want negative uh, 7 here. So we have 2, 1, uh, negative 2, and negative 3. Negative 3 times negative 2 is equal to 6, positive 6. Okay, and you, see, you check the, the cross product, it's negative seven again. So you put x here, x here, you get a two x minus three and x minus two. From the factorization, you can see that we can actually cancel two x minus three from top and bottom. But let's check the domain. Okay, so first we know that it's not in the lowest term. So the domain is everything except uh, here you get three halves or two, so negative infinity to three halves, uni three halves to two, and uni two to infinity. The set of all real numbers except three halves and two. Three halves is a solution of two x minus three is equal to zero. Uh, two is a solution of x minus two is equal to zero. Okay, so this is a domain. And second, the lowest term. Okay, let me okay, read it. Let me change the change the pencil. The lowest terms is after cancellation, r of x is equal to three x plus one over x minus two. So we need the lowest term. With the lowest term, we can determine the the vertical asymptote. Is x equal to two? Three halves does not give us vertical asymptote because it does not appear in the lowest term. Okay, and the horizontal asymptote or the ob uh, oblique asymptote is from the, the division. So you divide the numerate by the denominator. you get the r of x is equal to 3 plus 7 over x minus 2. So y equal to 3, just, just this part. y equal to 3 is a horizontal asymptote. It has one vertical asymptote and one horizontal asymptote. Uh, x-intercept. x-intercept means r of x is equal to 0. So check here. 3x plus 1 over x minus 2 is equal to 0. You get x is equal to negative 1 over 3. y-intercept. y-intercept is r of a 0. r of a 0, you let x be 0, y be 0, it's negative 1 half. Okay. And then you have vertical asymptote. You're going to study the behavior. Uh, ah, okay. Uh, yeah, uh, we study the behavior close to the asymptote. Uh, for x equal to 2, the vertical asymptote, left side. Left side 
uh, we can pick up, for example, axis 1.9. Axis 1.9, we check the sign. R of uh, 1.9 is equal to what? Uh, 3 times 1.9 plus 1 over 1.9 minus 2. 3 times 1.9 plus 1 is positive, but 1.9 minus 2 is negative. The ratio is negative. So it means on the left hand side, the graph will approach negative infinity. On the right side, we pick up x equal to 2.1. x is 2.1. We check this r over 2.1. So it's a 3 times 2.1 and plus 1 over 2.1 minus 2. The de the denominator is positive, numerator is also positive, so the, it approaches positive infinity. Okay, and horizontal, this is vertical sum total. Horizontal sum total, we want to know if the graph cross the horizontal sum total or not. So we will let r of x equal to three. This is a rational function, is equal to the horizontal sum total. We check if you can find the solution. This is a rational function. So it's a 3 plus 7 over x minus 2. And this equation has no solution because after you cancel 3, 3, you get a 0 equal to 7 over x minus 2. No solution. No solution means the graph of the rational function does not cross the horizontal sum total. Okay? So now let's check what we have already. Uh, what do we have? We have negative one third. So let's put one here. Uh, negative one here. This is negative one, negative one third. This is x intercept. Y intercept, negative one half is here. Uh, the horizontal sum total is y equal to three. So one, two, three. Horizontal sum total. Vertical sum total is x equal to two. One, two. Okay, so check here. On the left side, it approaches negative infinity. Wow, uh, my, my, my skill is horrible. So it has to be this way. Uh, I, should, I should draw it a little bit higher. So uh, le le let me rescale it, this, this place. Okay it will approach negative infinity here. And it does not cross the uh, uh, horizontal sum total. It, and uh, the graph will approach horizontal sum total. So it must be like this. And for the right part, we don't have any point. But we know that it will approach positive infinity on the right side of x equal to 2. It will approach positive infinity and does not cross the horizontal asymptote, so it has to be, you see, it has to be this part. And you can actually f try some value. For example, you let x be three. You let x be three, you check it. This value is going to be very, very big. Uh, x equal to three. Three times three plus one over three minus two. Three times three is nine, plus one is 10, over one is 10, so it's huge. So it will be like this. It approaches infinity. Uh, it approaches a horizontal sum total when x approaches infinity. And it approaches past infinity when x is very close to the two from right side. So the graph is, is like this. Okay? Ignore this part. Just just this small part, small piece. You have vertical sum, uh, horizontal sum total, vertical sum total. You have two points. You know it will be like this. On the right side, it's positive, so it will be like this. Again, in the in the graph of a rational function, there's no strange wave. If you have wave, definitely there's some weird uh, functions there. But with a regular function, x squared, x cubed stuff, it's always smooth. It's always smooth. Okay, okay. So this is a graph. This is a graph. Uh, it's the first problem. And second problem, mm, you can. OK, 
Okay, so second problem is not difficult. Uh, we are we're looking for a polynomial of degree to six, just one. One is enough with zeros. Uh, we already know zeros two, two plus i negative three minus i and a zero. Uh, if this is a if this is a, a real, I, I should make this more clear. It's a real polynomial. If it is a real polynomial, complex solutions always paired. So you have two plus i, you will have two minus i. You have negative three minus i, you will have negative three plus i. So you see one, two, three, four, five, six. You have six solutions. You have six zeros, you determine the polynomial. So polynomial fx can be, we only need one. We don't need all of them. So two give you the factor x minus two. X plus i give you the factor x minus parenthesis x uh, two plus i, not x two plus i. And negative three minus i give you the factor x minus parenthesis negative three minus i. Zero give you x minus zero. Two minus i give you the factor x minus parenthesis two minus i. Negative three plus i give you the factor x minus negative three plus i with the parentheses. Don't forget the parentheses. And this is your solution. Don't multiply it. It's not necessary. Okay. This is uh, I, I I will emphasize this is a real polynomial. The polynomial with all real coefficient. Then you can apply this properly. Okay. This is the second problem. Third problem. We are looking for all the complex zeros of polynomials and write them in the factors. So first of all, you are going to use that integer polynomial in uh, rational rational zeros theory. Uh, rational zero. If I have a p over q, the p a n x n a one x one uh, a one a1 x plus a0. If you have a polynomial and the p over q is a rational zero, then p divides a0. q divides a n. Okay? So here they're always one. So p and q are both one. So p over q can be plus minus one. There are only two possibilities for the uh, rational solutions. And you just check. You let x be one. You check it. That's good. It's equal to zero. So one is one zero. After you get a one zero, x minus one is a factor of f x. So we're looking for the solutions. We're looking for the quotient. You can use you can use the synthetic division or the long division, whatever. So. You, you copy the coefficients. So x cubed, there's no x squared term. There's no x terms. So you put a zero here. This is coefficient. Uh, this is constant term, negative one. x minus one, so c is one. So you copy, you move one down, and one times one is one. Zero plus one is one. One times one is one. Zero plus one is one. One times one is one. Negative one plus one is zero. Okay? So fx is equal to x minus one times this is a constant, this is x, this is x squared. So you got x squared plus x plus one. Okay? So these are the factorization. And then we continue the, the discussion because we need complex zeros. So you check this polynomial, x squared plus x plus one. A is B is C is equal to one. A, B, C are all one. So the, the root formula is two A negative b plus minus square root of a b square minus 4ac. So it's negative 1 plus minus square root of a negative 3 over 2. So it's a negative 1 plus minus square root of 3 times i over 2. You have two solutions. x is negative 1 plus square root of 3 times i over 2, or x is negative 1 minus square root of 3 times i over 2. You have those two solutions, you can factor it. So fx is equal to x minus 1. Why, why do I use this again? Sorry. And then x minus negative 1 plus root 3 times i over 2. And x minus negative 1 minus root 3 times i over 2. OK? 
Okay, so this is uh, the complete factorization. You have one, two, and three solutions, zeros. Okay. So this is a, a problem three. Problems, problem four, we look for the inverse of the function. We look for the inverse function. You just let y be x squared plus three over three x squared. Remember, x is positive. Okay, so, uh, yeah, x is positive. And this is the original function. And then you exchange x and y. x and y. You exchange x and y. Then this place, here x is positive. x corresponds to this x squared, this input. When you exchange x and y, you have the condition it is y is positive. Okay, so x corresponds to this position, so y is positive. You solve for y, you solve for y. So multiply two sides and move y squared to the left side. And then fact out y squared and divide this equation by uh, 3x minus 1. Because y is positive, you take positive square root. Okay, and this is the inverse function. This is the inverse function. And since you need the input to be positive, 3x minus 1 is is greater than zero. So three x is greater than one, x is greater than one third. So the, the domain is x greater than one over three. So this is a uh, problem four. You exchange x and y, you will use the property, uh, you will use the domain if it is necessary, especially when you take square root. Uh, five. Five, we're looking for the the values of this long product. And this is a test of the change of base formula. Log to the base A of B is equal to log to the base of C of B over log to the base of C of A. You can change the base. And this C can be whatever positive number, non, non one. So normally we will choose ln of B over ln of C in many, many cases. So you can see that we, we get a, a special choice. Here C is not restricted to the E, but here we just choose it. Okay. So this one becomes natural log of three over natural log of two times natural, natural log of four over natural log of three and natural log of five over natural log of four, natural log of six over natural log of five, natural log, natural log of seven over natural log of six, and natural log of eight over natural log of seven. And then you are going to do the cancellation. You only have natural log of eight over natural log of two. And we don't stop because eight is two cubed. So it's a natural log of two cubed over natural log of two, but this exponent can be moved forward. It's a property. And now you can cancel natural log two, natural log two, so it's a three. The value, the final answer should be three. Problem six. We have this equation We're looking for the solution. This is a quadratic in form. How, how do we know it's quadratic in form? 4 to negative x is 1 over 4 to x.
And then you multiply this equation by 4 to x. So you get 4 to x squared minus 10 is equal to 3 times 4 to x. And you move this to the left side. You will let u be 4 to x. Then you have u squared minus 3u minus 10 is equal to 0. So u minus 5, u plus 2 is equal to 0. So we get u is 5 or u is negative 2. u plus 2 is 0, so u is negative 2. u is 4 to x, so you get 4 to x is a 5, or 4 to x is negative 2. This one, no solution. Four to x cannot be a negative number, so there's no solution. So you only have four to x equal to five. Four to x is a five, then x is a log to the base four of five, and this is a, the unique solution. We never say it is negative, so it's not solution. We say that the left side is always positive, so uh, the this is not solution. Sometimes if if the left side can be a negative number, then this will give you a solution. We not always drop the negative sign, negative solution. Not always do that. We will we do it based on the, the left side, left expression. Seven. The effective rate of interest for the five percent compounded continuously. Okay? Uh, if we have compounding, uh, this is a property on page 470. There are effective rate of interest. If you have compounding n times per year, so the rate, effective rate is, is like this. If you get continuous, continuously, the the rate is effective, effective, so e to r minus one, okay? So for this problem, this r is a 5%, so the effective rate is going to be equal to e to 5% minus one. So you can write like this, because we normally do not put percent in this discussion, in this computation. So this is your final answer, don't I mean, you cannot simplify it. E to 0 0.05 minus 1. This is a uh, effective rate of interest. Effective rate of interest. Uh, 8. 8, we are looking for the value cotangent. 25, cosecant 65, sine 25. Uh, there are several properties we have, and in this problem, we get we, we use this property sine x is equal to cosine 90 minus x. If you have acute angle, then it's a uh, complementary angle. They share almost the uh, they, they share uh, alternative trigonometric values. Sine x is cosine 90 minus x. Okay, so check here. Cotangent is cosine over sine. Cosine 25 over sine 25. Cosecant is 1 over sine 65. Sine 25 is just sine 25. Cosecant is one of sine. And sine 25, sine 25, they're canceled. So we get cosine 25 over sine 65. Sine 65 is cosine 90 minus 65. 90 degree minus 65 degree. 90 degree minus 65 degree is exactly 25. So you get cosine 25 over cosine 25 is 1. So the answer is equal to 1.
problem nine, we have a right triangle. Hypotenuse has length eight inches. One angle is a 35 degrees, whatever. You, you, you can pick up whatever angle. And we find the length of each leg. So these two sides of the right angle are called the leg. So assume, let's call this one is A, this one is B. Then we know that A is opposite with respect to the 35 degrees. So A over eight inches is sine 35 degrees. And B over eight inches is cosine 35 degrees. So from here you get A is equal to eight sine 35. And B is eight cosine 35. Okay, so they are the length of two legs. So in this problem, you have to label your A and B from the diff from the your label. I will check if you get your uh, trig function well defined or not. Okay, so maybe you, you you label them in a different way, but for your label, I need to check if your definition is right or wrong. So here, opposite over hypotenuse is sine. Adjacent over hypotenuse is cosine. And from this, we can solve for the length of two legs. Okay, so you may have different label, but y your computation should be consistent with your label. Problem nine, we have sine theta equal to two over three and tangent theta is less than zero. Uh, theta positive, uh, sine theta positive, first and second quotient. Tangent negative, so theta is in the second quadrant. Theta is in the second quadrant. Second quadrant, the sine positive, tangent negative. Okay, remember that all S, T, C, S tag, right? Sine positive, other trig functions negative. Okay, now let's see. Uh, assume we have a theta here. Opposite is two, adjacent is three. Opposite of adjacent. And then you use the Pythagorean theorem. B squared plus two squared is equal to three squared. So B squared is nine minus four is five. B is square root of five, so this is square root of five. Pythagorean theorem gave us the other side. So cosine theta is square root of five over three, adjacent over hypotenuse. But remember, we say this part is negative. Cosine is negative, only sine positive. Tangent, cosine are both negative. Okay, and opposite, uh, tangent theta is opposite over adjacent, opposite over adjacent, but it's also negative. Cotangent theta is a reciprocal of it, so root five over two. And cosecant theta is one of a sine, is a three over two. Secant theta is one of a cosine, is a three over root five, negative three over root five. Okay, so we have one, two, three, four, five, well, five values. Okay, the last one, last one is not difficult. Last one we're using the, the periodicity. Uh, cotangent 390 degrees is cotangent 360 plus 30 degrees. 360 is a period, period, so it's a cotangent of 30 degrees. Cotangent 30 degrees, square root of three. Okay, remember that cotangent 30 degrees. If you don't remember, you can recall the sine and the cosine. This time you use cosine over sine. And the second, 420 degrees, it's a second 360 plus 60. <coughs> It's a second 60. Well, at least for me, I don't, rec I don't memorize the value of second cosecant cotangent. I will write like a cosine 60. Cosine 60 is one half. 
cosine 6 days one half. Check that cosine 30 root 3 over 2, cosine 45 root 2 over 2, cosine 60 1 over 2. 1 over 1 half is 2. Okay, so this is the last problem. Uh, again, I want to emphasize the practice exam just give you the idea how the second exam will be or could be, but your real exam is never limited to this practice exam. I may select other part of the uh, sections in this uh, in, uh, and put them in the, in the exam. So you have to study all the sections and do the exercise. If you have questions, send me email. But more or less, the real exam will be like this. Okay? Okay, if you have questions, send me email. We, uh, we finish this discussion. Great, thank you.